Hi there, welcome to this lesson. Now we are going to understand better the controls properties. If we go here in the insert drop down, we can insert several controls, such as text labels, forms, buttons, calendar pickers, and so on. Let's get started inserting a button. Once I click on the button, the button is inserted here in the Canva. This button is just a Canva control that I can drag and drop anywhere I want. All the controls in the app have properties. If I toggle the properties pane that right now is not showing, so here in the top bar, I have this icon that I can show the properties pane. I can see several properties here that can be changed to change how the button looks and what the button does. For example here, the first property is called text and it's the text that's inside the button. If I change it, let's say, click me, then it will reflect in the button visual. We have, for example, the display mode. Right now it's in the edit mode, which means that I can click on the button. Right now it doesn't do anything because we didn't add any action to the button yet. But if I select the button and change the display mode to disable, for example, I cannot click it anymore. Or even if I select view, I can just view and not interact. We have the visible property. In this case, it's a boolean, it means it can be true or false. If I toggle off, the button disappears. It's still in here, but it's hidden. If we put it back to on, then we can see the button. Then we have position, size, and padding. The position means the X and Y position of the button. Here, the button is inside its parent container, that's in this case is the Canva, so it means it's for example, now 105 pixels to the right, that means the X, and 60 from the top to the bottom, that means the Y position. If I drag here in the Canva, we can see that it updates the values here in the properties pane. We have also the width and height. I can click and resize, or I can type the formulas in here. We can, for example, make a square button set in the same width and same height, and so on. We have the paddings, that are the spaces between the border and the content inside it. If I put, for example, 50 to the left, I can see the text goes to the right because I added some padding in here. You will get used with this property later. We can change colors. For example, now I'm changing the background color to orange. If you're not seeing the very same properties as me in here, it means you're using a different button. Power Apps has now introduced the modern controls and for some environments it just appears right in the beginning, for others we need to toggle on or off. I'm going to explain this better in the next lesson. Don't worry if you see different things in here. What matters is that you understand that each control in the app has properties. And we can play with these properties. If I put a very big border radius, for example, I can have a rounded button if the button is configured to be square, if it has the same dimensions. Let's put 200 by 200, and then we have a rounded button. Now, if I insert a different control, for example, go to Insert, Media, and then Image, I'm going to have an image control here that's used to show images, and it has different properties. The first one is the image that I want to show on it. I can upload an image to the app or I can select from stock images. So let's select one from stock images. I'm going to get, for example, this flower and click on insert. It's going to be inserted inside the app and put here as the image property of this image control. And then we can see how the other properties behave. For example, we have the position that can be fit, center, fill, stretch, tile and so on. If I put fill, it will occupy all the space that the image is occupying. We have transparency that can go from 0 to 1, so if I put 0 0.5, we have a kind of transparent image. Let's put back to 0. And so on. So what I want you to understand here is that we have properties that change based on what's selected. Also in this properties pane, we have the advanced tab where we can find other properties. We have action properties 
that we can use to put actions, such as navigating to other page, showing a notification, editing a record. We are going to use that a lot in the course. We have the data properties, that are the texts, the images, and the data information. We have also style properties, that are, the, that are basically the colors and things related to visuals. Another way to find these properties here is in this top left drop down. With the control selected, we can see all the properties in here. For example, let's go back to the button and then we can see the text property here that says click me. If I just remove the me and keep click, I can see that it reflects here in the button and also reflects here in the right pane. So it's up to you to choose if you want to change the properties from here or from the properties pane. Sometimes I'm just editing a text here, for example, in the properties pane, and I would like to have more spacing. So I can basically click here in the label and this will take me to the formula bar that's here. And I can continue my formula here in the formula bar. So it's a nice shortcut to know if you want to change something, you click in the label and then it takes you to the formula bar. Now that you already know that controls have properties, I'm going to show you in the next lesson why you may be seeing something different from here and I'm going to explain how to enable or disable it and what are the differences between the classic and modern controls. See you in the next lesson.